President Bola Tinubu has warned security agencies not to work at cross purposes under his watch. The president's position was made known after he received a security appraisal from heads of security and intelligence agencies in the country. State House correspondent Adesua Omoran reports. With Boko Haram insurgents in the northeast, banditry in the northwest and north central regions, cessationist agitation in the southeast, and oil theft in the Niger Delta, President Bola Tinubu faces a daunting task of ensuring the safety and security of Nigerians. We shall defend the nation from terror and all forms of criminality that threaten the peace, the peace and stability. Of our country. On his fourth day in office, President Tinubu holds a crucial meeting with heads of security and intelligence agencies. The meeting served as a platform to receive comprehensive situation reports from across the country while he emphasizes the vital need for coordination among the various security agencies. He has made it very clear that he will not accept a situation in which our fortunes keep declining. All agencies must work to achieve one single purpose. Working at cross purposes and colliding with each other is not something that he will condone. Mr. President, um, fired without mandate and to uh, realign um, you know, our interventions to, to fit the expectations, not just of Nigerians, of course, with the mandate that Mr. President has given to us. In a move towards security reforms, the President announces his intention to review the country's security architecture with a specific focus on maritime security and combating oil theft. He's going to take a closer look at our misfortunes in the maritime domain focusing particularly on the issues of oil theft. That he is not going to tolerate. Wherever the problem is coming from, it must be crushed as soon as possible. He's already mandated the security agencies to come up with a blueprint. As far as he knows, as far as he's concerned, he doesn't have the luxury of time. And whatever changes will be made have to be done as soon as possible. Furthermore, as a moral booster, the welfare and support of the armed forces and other operatives in the theater of operations was also in focus during the meeting. The president also has decided that whatever ventures the armed forces are going to be engaged in, they must carry along those operatives in the theater, they must be well fed, well kitted, motivated and given all that they require. Recognizing the significance of the dedication and sacrifices in safeguarding the nation, the president reportedly expresses his appreciation for the armed forces, intelligence agencies and paramilitary organizations. Now, all attention turns to the president's directive to the security hierarchy as it strives for a safer Nigeria where officers and operatives are motivated and dedicated in ensuring the nation's security. From the presidential villa, Adesua Omoruan for Rise News. And after he met with security chiefs, President Tinubu received Senate President Ahmed Lawan and Speaker of the House of Representatives Femi Bajabiamila. The meeting comes ahead of the inauguration of the 10th National Assembly, which has generated controversy within the ruling APC. Firstly, I briefed him on what uh, uh, we have been doing in the last uh, few years just for him to, to be abreast with the situation and what we can do in the next one week because uh, the ninth, ninth National Assembly, the 9th Senate particularly, uh, is going to have its tenure ended on the 11th of uh, June. So it's to give him uh, an update of what we have been able to achieve. We've all seen the benefits of a cordial relationship. Um, not necessarily in bed together, but cordial relationship. We've seen the benefits in the last four years, unless you, you unless you uh, don't want to be truthful. And we've seen the we've seen the the 
the other side where you don't have a cordial relationship and which only knows for the betterment of Nigeria. I think um, uh, the 10th Assembly, um, for the sake of uh, Nigeria and for the sake of constituents and having seen what happened in the last four years and what happened in the last eight years, who told that same line. Tinubu also met with the contenders for the Speaker and Deputy Speaker offices at the House of Representatives. Tajudin Abbas and Benjamin Kalu spoke about the legislature's independence and unity in the Green Chambers. Well, we didn't have any discussion concerning our opponents who are also aspiring to be speakers and deputy speakers. We restricted our discussions to the matters of the day, issues that have to do with the challenges that uh, this country is facing, particularly the economic and social uh, challenges, and uh, what he intends to do within the next few days, beginning with what he has done on the issue of uh, fuel subsidy. What we are bringing on board is parliamentary sovereignty. Parliamentary sovereignty that will um, ensure that the borders of the mandates of various arms of government will be respected. But also, recognizing that interdependence is key towards achieving any national objective. Well, a number of things to chat about, Kay. We have the president um, had at work a day in office. He's met with the service chiefs, met with leaders of the National Assembly, um, president of the Senate, and speaker of the House, and also some members elect of the House of Representatives. Your thoughts on this? Well, uh, the first one is the issue of security. Um, I will say I'm happy with what the president has done in terms of uh, security but I need him to do more. He has met with the security uh, heads. He has met with all the heads of the security agencies. Uh, he did say clearly to them, which is what the NSO said, uh, that there is no time, no luxury of time. But what I would expect is after reading out the riot act to the security heads, to the head of security agencies, he needs to now begin to seriously consider restructuring the security architecture of Nigeria. It has failed us consistently, so he needs to make sure that he looks at how is he going to restructure, what does he need to do, and he has to do it quickly. It's not enough to just give them the riot, read out the riot act and say, go sort it out. If they could, they would have, but if there are things he needs to do to empower them, to strengthen their hands, to make sure that they deliver results, then he has to do it quickly. On the issue of uh, relationship between the National Assembly and the presidency, it's, it's something that we all know, that in every country around the world, take America for example, the National Assembly there, uh, the Congress, you will see that there is a need for President Biden to work across party line with all the other parties to make sure he gets the results that he needs. And we have to have the same here. The only concern that most Nigerians, most good Nigerians, independent Nigerians have is they don't want a rubber stamp uh, National Assembly. Where the president wants 10 trillion, he gets it. He wants ways and means restructured and changed to whatever amount, he gets it. He wants to take a loan, he gets it. If that happens, that is not good for our democracy, it's not good for our economy. But it is good for there to be, like Fenwick Bajabi Amila said, there's got to be a good relationship between the National Assembly and the presidency. Thank you, Kiri. Ufai. I mean, so concerning the security architecture, we keep using the word rejigging, restructuring. Goodness me, I think there's another word in the lexicon we can use as regards to this. We know the problems. For the kind of security challenge we have in Nigeria today, the best rejigging of the security architecture will be passing into law bills that will support state police. We need more boots on the ground across the states. Once you have that, then, to a large extent, you can start to stem the tide of the things that are happening. It's not for the want of laws on ground. And when we say rejig the security architecture, I say, let's stop the semantics. We have many bills. You know, we have the forest security bills that empowers hunters and the likes. We have a lot of them. But the greatest one we need now is putting more boots on the ground in the state, state police, how it's going to work in tandem with the federal police will go a long way. So you can have local intelligence and be able to feed that local intelligence and stem the tide. I mean, we saw 
you know, a great reaction as regards the insecurity going on in Ondo once Amotepo came in. I'm not saying they don't have their own challenges, don't get me wrong. But to a large extent, all of the stories we need to hear greatly reduced once Amotepo came in. So it behoves of him, will he be able to do state police? He also has been a proponent of restructuring. For all the problems we have in the states and revenue, will he be able to restructure? That's the biggest question he will have to answer in this administration. And the earlier it does it, the better. Because that was the mantra the APC used to come into power many years ago. As regards National Assembly, I'm sad to bust your bubble, Ayo. This is looking like another rubber stamp National Assembly. It's going to be. You know why? In the claims you talked about, it is the lawmakers that make their decisions. But here, it is based on the president's endorsement. And then the lawmaker feeds off. The only outlier you will see is if you have somebody that can spend more money to curry the favor of his colleagues and an upset will happen. But if you don't have that, or you have a Sarakiesque situation, which we, which we don't think will happen. But with this, you are facing another rubber stamp National Assembly. And you see, we need the independence of the National Assembly. Because you see, we, f we suffer from something called the danger of a single story. If you have a rubber stamp National Assembly, it's a single story. That's why you see all the shenanigans they passed at the last minute. Increasing fiscal irresponsibility and the likes. But when you have a National Assembly that can challenge the government, then there can be a lot. See what happened between Biden and the Republicans as regards increasing the debt ceiling. They said, yes, Biden, you will increase the debt ceiling to $31 trillion, but we will ensure that you make some more governmental cuts. And he made those cuts to be able to balance it out. And that's what you need a National Assembly for. Because let's not forget, a national, there are three arms of government, executive, legislature, and judiciary. The National Assembly should be standalone, not rubber stamp. It's not an appendage of the executive. But with this, we are going to another rubber stamp National Assembly. And it's sad for Nigeria. I want to just chip in a few things. Um, first, with regards to meetings with security chiefs, chief of defense staff, and this was under the General Security Appraisal Committee, was a maiden edition of that. And what um, had come out of it, you know, you both have already talked about that. But one thing that perhaps we should also consider, or a question I'd like to ask is, can you put old, um, new wine in old wine skin? And this question has come up a lot of times in terms of, as part of restructuring and rejigging, would the president be changing the service chiefs? I ask this because um, one of the things that the NSA said was that the president had asked them to create a master plan to tackle the issues of insecurity. And then you, the question begs, what master plan would they create that was different from the previous administration? Because under the previous administration, we were plagued with a number of um, security challenges. We had terrorism, we had banditry, we had kidnapping and, and the likes. And they were not able to decisively deal with this despite the number of um, announcements they'd made. So again, asking the question, would the president be sustaining or retaining these current service chiefs or would he be making a change to change indeed completely the security architecture of the nation. But in terms of other things he said, they're going to use contemporary measures. He had mentioned this during his campaign, that he was going to have a technological approach to tackling insecurity. Another thing I'd like, I would have liked for them to have discussed, I don't know if it came up in the agenda, is the effect of the reality of people in terms of being able to afford um, food and transport and the likes, poverty in the land and the impact on crime rate and how they would manage this. Because when you talk about tackling insecurity, it's not just about force. You also look at the soft measures to addressing insecurity issues. There's also an investigation into the cause of insecurity issues. And so we cannot shy away from looking at the impact of people moving, more people moving into poverty, you know, however temporarily, due to the removal of subsidy. How will this affect security in Nigeria? And finally, in terms of the National Assembly, we all said before, in terms of not wanting a rubber stamp assembly. However, However, it must be said that for any president to rule effectively or to govern effectively, he must have some sort of working relationship with the assembly because you also don't want an assembly that keeps 
stopping his efforts or blocking his way in terms of development of policies, making of laws. So there has to be a balance there. Yes, we don't want a rubber stamp um, assembly, but we also want an assembly that works with the president for the good of Nigerians.